In the world of gaming keyboards, you see a lot of the same thing over and over, especially when it comes to budget-priced keyboards. Not that bigger companies like Razer and Corsair aren't guilty, but if you go and look on Amazon for gaming keyboards, you're going to run into a lot of keyboards that look like this. I've had my fair share of keyboards on this channel that I reviewed and liked that look like that, but admittedly, it can get a little bit boring. Well, that is when companies like Akko come through with some of the best looking keyboards that you can just go online and purchase instead of paying hundreds of dollars to get similar looking results with a custom board. There's a whole plethora of things that go into that as far as switch choices and whatnot, but that's that's another video. Today, we're talking about the Akko 3087. That's, uh, that's this one right here. It's a handsome boy. A big shout out and thank you to Banggood.com for sending this Echo 3087 for review. Now to be specific, this is the V2. There already is a 3087 that's been out for a while. It comes in some various colorways. This new colorway though is available on the V2 version specifically and there are some differences that we're going to get into. I just recently reviewed the Echo 3068 Cherry MX Brown version with the 9009 dust flying around in the room. I just recently reviewed the Echo 3068 Cherry MX Brown version with the 9009 Retro colorway. That colorway is named and themed after the GMK 9009 keycaps. GMK keycaps, if you don't already know, are usually sold in group buys. They are really expensive to begin with, and then once the group buy is over, you can usually only find them on eBay or r slash mech market on Reddit just to find them for double, triple the price or so. Well, this is the silent themed Echo 3087, but don't be fooled by the word silent on the box. They are not claiming that this keyboard is silent. Silent is the name of the theme, the colorway that you see here, because it's actually inspired by GMK Muted. Silent, muted, it's similar, but like it's not quite, and same thing goes with these keycaps. But we're gonna get into the keycaps a little bit later. Currently, this keyboard is only $77.99 on Banggood.com, which is a fantastic price for an Echo keyboard at all. If you've seen my Echo 3068 review, you know that I like Echo keyboards, but does this new version hold up? Well, we're gonna get into that. Inside the box, you'll receive the keyboard, a manual that is not in English, a USB-C cable that is shaped to fit into the USB-C port on the board, a keycap puller, and plenty of spare light blue and lavender keycaps. Out of the box, the keycaps on the board are all gray and light gray. The optional light blue and lavender keycaps are included in the box. Now, as I just mentioned, the included USB-C cable is specifically made to fit in the groove here in the back of the keyboard and it is still reversible it'll fit either way when i first saw this i was a little concerned because i thought what if this cable dies or you just want to use another cable maybe you have a custom coiled cable and you want to use that i have two different coiled cables that i was able to use with this board just fine one from Asseni Cables and the other from Tez Cables. But if using the included USB-C cable or any other traditional USB-C cable that is not coiled, there are slots to run the cable through so that it can either come through the center or the left or right sides of the board. A few problems that I run into though with that that makes me a little uncomfortable, in order to route the cable to the left or the right, you have to sort of bend the cable back toward the board. The problem is this makes sort of a loop coming out of the back of the keyboard. You could in theory make a bigger loop, but then it's just an eyesore poking out of the back of the keyboard. Whichever you choose though, try to be careful because I found that the teeth in the grooves in the back of the keyboard end up kind of snagging and scratching or damaging the cable on the outside. It didn't do any internal damage to the cable, but each time I put it in there and took it out, it definitely scraped some of the rubber off the cable. Kind of annoying. Also underneath the board are four rubber feet and two dual level pop out feet for additional levels of height adjustment. It has a very smooth plastic body with a sleek design that I really like. The Aqua logo in the front right corner is a nice touch without being too invasive with the branding like you might see on a Red Dragon keyboard for example. Now aside from the new colorway which was not previously available on the Aqua 3087, there are some other changes that make this keyboard different from any other Aqua keyboard that I've tested and that is that it does not use Cherry MX switches. My other two Echo 3068s that I have here both have Cherry switches. Other ones that I've seen all use Cherry switches, but this one actually uses Echo's own in-house Echo branded switches.
I would say this is probably one of the more disappointing aspects of this keyboard. While I'm not as big a fan of Cherry MX switches as I used to be maybe like a year ago, having just experienced better switches since then, I would have probably preferred Cherry MX switches over the switches that are included. Just from using the tactile version at least, I feel like the Cherry MX Browns felt better. These feel almost more like scratchy linears. They're just barely tactile. Maybe I'm just spoiled from having come from glorious pandas that I've been using on the GMMK compact I have here on my desk. I've been using those and they've been extremely tactile. They feel great. But when I use these, it just doesn't feel super good. Again, it just feels scratchy. Now, it doesn't feel scratchy like super horrible. It just feels... <sighs> It almost feels crispy. There's almost like a different kind of satisfaction to using it. It's not terrible. It's just probably what you're not typically going to be looking for in a tactile switch. Sound wise, they're okay. I've definitely heard worse keycaps, keybo keyboards, key keyboard switches on this channel, but uh, I would say they're, they're not, they're not great. They're not, they're nothing terrible, but they're nothing to, to write home to, to your mom about. And then she gets a letter and she's just like, I don't want to understand this. I don't. What, what did you write to me about this for? I don't know about keyboards. I'm I'm your mom. And I will say the stabilizers are also just meh. Spacebar is probably the best sounding of the bunch. The rest of them could use some work. They don't really seem to be factory lubed from what I can tell. If they are, it's very lightly lubed. Aesthetically though, this is probably one of the best looking production boards that at least I can think of. Obviously that's subjective. You might not like how this keyboard looks, but you might like how the GK61 looks, to which I say, get better opinions. It's just that after a while with a lot of the samey looking black or white RGB 60% keyboards, seeing something a little more tame, a little more subdued that does not have RGB at all, it's just what I've sort of come to prefer since starting reviewing keyboards on this channel. RGB is great, it's always nice to have RGB as an option, but it's just there's just something nice that calls out to me personally about a keyboard that looks like this. The keycaps included are the same thick PBT OEM profile keycaps that you would come to expect from other ACO keyboards. Really, you could buy this board for the keycaps alone and then just reuse them later on down the line when you get a better keyboard, and it would still probably be worth it, especially considering how much actual GMK muted keycaps would go for. Just off the top of my head, thinking about other production boards just out of the box, you, you put it out of the box and you put it on your desk, Echo probably makes my favorite keycaps out of all of those. Most other keyboards I reviewed on this channel, I'm like, those keycaps are cool, but you, I, I'll probably replace them later. Not so with Echo. Ultimately, the keyboard works. It performs, it functions, you're gonna press a key and it's gonna register, assuming you have it plugged in. It's decent at many things, but it is not extraordinary at a lot, aside from maybe the aesthetics. It's not the most amazing gaming keyboard, but that's really not what it's marketed for. But it's also not the best typing experience either. If you prefer linear switches like I do, I would say you may want to consider trying the linear switch version of this keyboard. If the tactile switches feel as linear as they do, imagine how great and smooth the linears are going to feel. But seriously, I, I wish I could try the linear version to tell you guys about because I feel like if you're going linear, you might like this board a lot more than if you're going with the tactile version. If you're dead set on tactile switches, it's probably best to look elsewhere. The best thing about this board, the reason I would say to go for this one, is the looks. It is the aesthetics. If you're looking at this board and you're thinking, that's a butte right there, I want that on my desk, then there you go. Sold. This looks like a custom. It's just not going to perform like a custom, but you're not paying the same amount. So I think some cut corners, some compromises are to be expected. And that's the Echo 3087, a resonating meh. I'm sorry if this wasn't a shining review. It's just that at this point, with two great experiences with Echo in the past, I've come to expect more from them. And while I will say they nailed the looks of this keyboard, at least as far as the tactile switch version goes, it could use some work. But if that's not going to stop you, if you're watching this review and you're still thinking that's a keyboard I want, maybe you do want to try the linear version, or maybe you're unlike me and you want to try the clicky version. You want to go for the loud clicky boy. I'm not a fan, but hey, maybe you are. Maybe those switches are good. I don't know. You can check it out in the description. I have links there, affiliate links from Banggood. If you purchase from there, I'll get a little bit of revenue back toward the channel. That helps keep fueling the channel, keeps fueling portly, keeps me going, keeps the channel going, and keeps you coming back for more keyboard reviews. If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, and consider subscribing. Maybe share the video with your friends. Share it online. Just share it like you share a piece of bread with a starving orphan. 
in these trying times. I literally have a stack of products right here behind me. I'm not good with directions. This stack right here, it's all stuff that I'm getting I'm getting ready to review. There's tons of stuff and that's not even all of it. They're, they're keep on a coming and boy are we going. We're still going. And it's all thanks to you guys. Thank you so much. I gotta go. I'm out of here. My throat hurts and I'm rambling on. I've been recording for like half an hour. What kind of time is that to spend your day doing after work? <coughs> all right, if you like this video, you can check out one of these videos here.